Okay, for this question, we're going to determine the sine of our delta u, q, and w based on this PV process graph that we see in the diagram. Now, we have to remember that there's always a few things going on when we look at a PV diagram. It's not just as simple as P times V, although that is a useful quantity which we'll talk about in a second. Our first law of thermodynamics is always true. So our change in internal energy, delta U, is equal to Q plus W, where Q is the heat added or removed and W is the work done by the gas or on the gas. U itself, the internal energy, can be calculated by going 3 over 2 times nkt, or we can say it's 3 over 2 nrt, depending on which constants we would rather use. So that means U is related to the temperature directly. If the temperature of the gas goes up, then my internal energy goes up. So in other words, our change in U is related to our change in temperature. So when we focus on that, let's go back to our ideal gas law, which also has to be true at every point on these curves. And the ideal gas law simply says P times V is nRT, or if we use the same constants that we see above, P times V is nKT. So in that case, we see that T is actually related to the product of P times V. So all we have to do is compare the product of P times V to each other at locations A, B, and C. And the biggest PV product will have the biggest temperature. So using the product of P times V, we can rank which temperature is the highest, A, B, or C. So if we quickly look at our diagram, we see that P, V at location A, and let's not worry about the kilopascals for now, let's just have a look at the numbers. P, V at A is about 12, 2 times 6. P, V at B is 80, 8 times 10. And P, V at C is 20, 2 times 10. So our lowest PV value is at A, our next highest is at C, and our maximum PV value is at B. So if I write as a little inequality, I would say PA VA is less than PC VC, and that's less than PB VB. Now remember, PV is related to the temperature. So the temperature at A is less than the temperature at C is less than the temperature at B. So we should be able to use that information to rank our internal energies. Now what about the work? Work is just the area under a PV graph. So we've got negative work when we go from A to B because the gas is expanding. So why don't we fill that out immediately? Negative work and it'll be represented by the area underneath the curve. We can calculate that if we like. From B to C, the volume isn't changing at all. In fact, we call that isochoric for constant volume. And if the volume is not changing, that means the piston is not moving at all. There's no work done. And then from C to A, the gas is being squeezed. So we say that we're doing work on the gas, so work would be positive and it would be the area under the, the line that rep represented by CA. Now, delta U. Here's our temperature at A. Here's our temperature at B. And this represents our temperature at C. Now, going from A to B, if we look back over to our rankings on the right, TA is less than TB, so that means our temperature is rising. And if our temperature is getting greater, then delta U is increasing. So from A to B, our delta U is positive. Now from B to C, well, TB is bigger than TC, according to our rankings. So if the gas temperature is going down, then we say delta U is negative. So from B to C, our change in internal energy, which is all we care about is the change in temperature, is negative. And then finally, from C to A, well, C has a higher temperature than A, so once again, our internal energy is negative. Now, if we go down to the Q value, we, all we have to do now is adhere to our first law of thermodynamics, which simply says 
that our change in internal energy is equal to Q plus W. So if W is negative for the first column, a negative plus something has to give me a positive value. So clearly Q has to be positive for that column. So I'm going to write the equation into that column and then we'll write in our answer. So if we see that if delta U is Q plus W, then if delta U is positive and W is negative, Q must be positive for that equation to work. Similarly, we can go from B to C in the same process. If W is zero and delta U is negative, then Q must be negative. That's our only choice. And finally, when we go from C to A, we have found out that delta U is negative, W is positive. So if we've got a negative on our left-hand side of the equation and W is positive, then Q must be negative for this equation to work out. We have to remove heat. Now what about for the entire cycle? Well, delta U is the easiest one to determine for the entire cycle. If I start at a temperature TA and I go around the entire cycle and I end up right back at temperature TA, then my overall change in temperature is zero, so delta U overall is zero. So delta U, very simple for the entire cycle. We're going to say it's zero, and that's because my overall change in temperature is zero. Now what about the work? Notice I always do Q last. I find that one the, the trickiest. Work and delta U are what I want to focus on. Now work is the area underneath the graph. So if I look at my negative work, that's when we went from A to B, that is represented by the area underneath this diagonal line. And I'll shade that in and display what that area looks like. So we see that the area underneath the graph bet between A and B is represented by that blue region that I've shaded, which is quite a large negative area. Now there's no work done between B and C because the gas has not expanded or contracted, but from C to A we found there was positive work done on the gas as we squeezed it. And it would be the area under the curve, under that straight line between C and A. I'll shade that one in red. And right away we can see from that red shaded region that it's a lot smaller than this larger blue one above it. So our red one, we say that that positive work done is actually small. Smaller certainly than the negative work done. So overall the negative wins, so our overall work done in that process is negative. So I can fill that in. And if you look at our equation once again, if delta U is Q plus W and delta U is zero, if W is negative, then Q must be positive.